warning. This podcast contains graphic language. What's happening, Midtown? Big shout out to us subscribers out there and all the Midtown listening worldwide. You are right here, Ken Rick and Podcast, one of the hottest podcasts for Midtown and Midtown only. I'm right here in the Northwest, podcasting it up all around the world, baby. <laughs> Welcome back, gentlemen. Welcome back, fellow Midtown. Well, today's podcast is going to be uh, very interesting. I just ran into the story yesterday, thanks to Michael Savage. And I'm going to talk about the lawyer of the men's rights movement out there in California. He got murdered 10 days ago and the crime still unsolved. And it's a very bizarre story and it's getting interesting by the day. So in this podcast, I'm going to talk about all the links, who was the man, what kind of great job he did for men. The man was out there doing great work, uh, millions of dollars of pro bono. He was um, the movie, the old documentary. Red Pill. If you haven't seen the Red Pill, I encourage you to go check it out. It's on Netflix. Very good. Um, well done. Put together um, documentary. And um, I'm about to get in some stuff regarding to this um, German right here. His name is Mark Anenachi and Gelacci. Apologies, I'm Gelacci. And he was a prominent man's right attorney, murdered in front of his home. And I'm about to get in some sound bites and articles here like I always do. You know how I rock this thing here and the uh, podcast. But I'm going to play you five things, five facts about Mark uh, Angelacci. So like I do, I play you a soundbite from an article. And like we say, metal, the future between men and machines. So let's listen to this um, article here. Facebook, Mark Angelucci. Mark Angelucci, a prominent men's rights attorney who was featured in the controversial documentary, The Red Pill, was shot to death in his home in San Bernardino County, California. The shooting death happened at Glenwood Drive in Cedapines Park, a small mountain town where Angelucci lived. He died of gunshot wounds, according to the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. The suspect and motive are not clear. Authorities said the victim was Angelucci, 52 years old, a resident of Cedar Pines Park. The New York Times is now reporting that federal investigators are probing whether Roy Den Hollander might be involved in Angelucci's murder. Den Hollander was a men's rights attorney who is believed to have murdered the son of federal judge Esther Salas in New Jersey, also wounding her husband. You can read more about Den Hollander, here, there are similarities between the two cases. Reports that a killer wearing a delivery uniform knocked on the door only to open fire. Both men worked on cases to open up the military draft to women, and the Daily Beast reported that Den Hollander had Angelucci's name in his car when he was found dead of apparent suicide. In a self-published book, Den Hollander wrote, A group of men's rights activists in California, with whom I have been in contact for years, filed a lawsuit on behalf of a young man claiming that draft registration discriminated against him and other guys 18 to 25 years old by not requiring females to register, Mark was extremely well spoken and a skilled publicist for men's issues. Appearing on the Phil Donahue show, on Dr. Phil, and in countless other television, radio, and newspaper outlets, the National Coalition for Men wrote in a statement, Mark published op-ed opinion pieces in the Los Angeles Times and numerous other press outlets, tirelessly speaking out for a fairer, kinder world. Here's what you need to know. Rule 1. Sheriff's officials say an unknown male shot and killed Angelucci, according to a news release by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. Police learned of the homicide at 4.03 p.m. on the 11th of July, 2020. The suspect was described as an unknown male. Authorities have released few details in the case. On Saturday, the 11th of July, 2020 at 4.03 p.m. Twin Peaks deputies responded to a report of a shooting at 22,400 Glenwood Drive. Upon arrival deputies found the victim, later identified as Mark Angelucci, unresponsive and suffering from apparent gunshot wounds. Medical aid also responded and Angelucci was pronounced deceased at the scene, their press release says. The investigation is ongoing. The motive for the shooting is unknown at this time. Detectives are asking anyone that witnessed the shooting or has information to contact Detective Simon Demiary, Specialized Investigations Division, Homicide Detail at 909-387-3589. Callers can remain anonymous. Rule 2. 
Angelucci was described as having a magnetic personality by the National Coalition of Men, for which he served as vice president. Angelucci was the vice president and board member of the National Coalition for Men, Mark Ichi and Angelucci, vice president and board member of the National Coalition for Men, NCFM, and longtime president and founder of the Los Angeles chapter of NCFM was tragically murdered early in the morning of the 11th of July, 2020, in front of his home in Crestline, California. A statement released by the coalition said, Mark Angelucci was truly beloved, with a personality that had a magnetism that many of his friends and colleagues found to be truly magical. Mark was an unbelievably generous man, living on a shoestring despite some personal health challenges so he could donate many millions of dollars of his time to mostly voluntary legal work on behalf of men's rights and the genuine gender equality that is so badly needed in this country and this world. The website statement says that Mark joined NCFM as a law student in 1997 after seeing his friend physically abused for years by his wife and then denied domestic violence services because he is male. In 2001 he formed the LA chapter of NCFM and served as its president until 2008, during which time NCFM LA became an active chapter that organized rallies, filed lawsuits and received significant media attention, the statement concluded. Mark was a man full of joy and love, a true pleasure to know for all of us fortunate enough to be able to call him our colleague and or friend. If Mark Ichi and Angelucci didn't exist, we would need to invent him, though honestly the man so far exceeded any dreams any of us could possibly have for an unbelievable combination of shining personal qualities and amazing professional achievements. While wildly successful on the legal front, he was a fabulously down-to-earth loving man when not demolishing opponents in courtrooms to promote justice. Rest in peace, our dear fallen soldier. No finer man ever walked the planet. The Southern Poverty Law Center has been harshly critical of elements of the men's rights movement. Rule 3. Angelucci, who appeared in a documentary called The Red Pill, was co-counsel in cases involving a congressional candidate. Angelucci appeared in The Red Pill, a movie about the men's rights movement. The documentary is controversial, a scathing review, in Daily Review wrote, the director's central hypothesis is that, in the present day and age, women have it better than men, the red pill should not be laughed away or derided as benign flap doodle. It is a dangerous film, in that it presents men going through hard times a convenient catch-all narrative, a panacea for their woes, Cassie J. The filmmaker behind The Red Pill wrote a tribute to Angelucci on her website. It says in part, he never initially planned on being a men's rights attorney, as I labeled him in my film, but his big heart wouldn't let him turn his back on good, innocent people needing legal counsel. The more he worked on these cases, the more he learned how unjust the system was. In his 20 years of practicing law, he became one of the most sought after and effective attorneys to fight on behalf of men and women in cases where gender discrimination was apparent, such as cases involving child custody, divorce, paternity laws, domestic violence services, criminal sentencing, military conscription, public benefits, false accusations and education. Rhonda Kennedy, an attorney running for US Congress, wrote on Twitter that she had spoken with detectives. My co-counsel on two cases Mark Angelucci, was murdered last night. Just did an interview with detectives. If you have any information please contact the San Bernardino detectives, she wrote. Her Twitter page says, I am a mother of six, including seven Y.O. triplets, an attorney and dean at Itachi Law School and running for Congress in CA 26. Mark touched the lives of everyone who knew him. He made a difference not only in fighting for the underdog in the courts but for all who knew him, she wrote in a statement, adding, even though his life was tragically cut short, the causes that he battled for in the courts will endure and be his lasting tribute. Mark demonstrated the power of the law and a strict interpretation of the Constitution can make a difference. He will be missed every day. Rule 4. Angelucci won cases involving male-only draft registration and excluding male victims from domestic violence funding, Kennedy said in a news release that Angelucci was the vice president and board member of the National Coalition for Men. 
She said she had just been in court with him and that he was alive when police arrived but later died of his wounds. She praised the work he had done legally in winning many groundbreaking cases such as an equal protection case against the Selective Service Administration overturning mail-only draft registration. He previously won a case in California, Woods v. Horton, that held it is unconstitutional to exclude male victims of domestic violence from state funding for victim services. My heart is breaking over the tragic and senseless death of my friend and co-counsel on several cases, Mark Angelucci, she wrote, the National Coalition for Men outlines similar accomplishments, writing, Mark compiled a truly legendary set of legal achievements, including recently winning an equal protection case against the Selective Service Administration overturning male-only draft registration. In 2008 Mark won a landmark appellate case against the state of California, Woods v. Horton, which held it is unconstitutional to exclude male victims of domestic violence from state funding for victim services. Mark also helped draft and enact legislation to stop paternity fraud, served on the California DCSS Paternity Committee, served on the training committee of the LA County Domestic Violence Council and testified before the California Senate and Assembly Judiciary Committees. In a remarkable tribute to Mark's skill at building bridges and remedying discrimination, the Southern Poverty Law Center, which some might think would be opposed to much of his work, invited him to be an honorary on their wall of tolerance. One recent case involving Angelucci is an appeal before the California Supreme Court could affect the rights of thousands of landowners against government-sanctioned theft of private property by way of under-regulated receivership laws. The case is County of Mariposa VJDC Land Company, LLC. A news release on that case quotes Angelucci as saying, this case is one of an overreaching government with no accountability. Rule 5. Angelucci, who filled his Facebook page with pictures of travels, founded student bar associations in college. Angelucci's Facebook page is full of photos from travels around the world, riding on motorcycles, and with animals. In June, in his most recent visible post, he wrote, when you make a judgment without researching and listening to what both sides say, looking at their data, considering their positions, and thinking it through, your judgment is flawed. Period. Angelucci went to college in California, and he was active even back then. In February, he wrote on Facebook, My most memorable part of law school was playing the heroic nerd Evil and Trevenon in the UCLA law musical Colonel Knowledge, 1999, written and directed by the genius professor Kenneth W. Graham. To the music of Jerome Kern, according to the National Coalition for Men. Mark graduated Phi Beta Kappa from the University of California at Berkeley in 1996 with a bachelor's degree in philosophy and received a law degree from UCLA School of Law in 2000, where he received several public interest awards and founded two student bar associations. While at UCLA, Mark also started a student chapter of NCFM. Read next. Well, there you go, fellas. You know, the man has done great work for men mankind they don't make it like that anymore you know and this is getting so bizarre and i'm going to continue right here with this podcast because um this took place nine days ago so far they haven't found a killer yet this article is by heavy.com and it was um six days ago so i learned about all this stuff like i said previously yesterday and now it's been going a lot of moving parts regarding to this um crime so I'm going to play you here a few headlights from a few days ago and then one from today regarding to uh, this fine, fine gentleman. Um, you know, sometimes you don't understand how people think and they do crazy shit, you know, and they it's senseless killing murders. But we are looking for answers right here, gentlemen. I'm looking for answers. I want to know who did this. So far, there's a lot of moving parts. And they might have a suspect, but they don't know yet. But this is an unsolved mystery crime so far for um, this fine, fine gentleman out here, fellas. So let me play another clip right here from um, witnesses and stuff like that and neighbors from a few days ago. Now at 
5.30, a murder mystery in the Inland Empire. That's where a civil rights attorney was shot and killed at his home in the mountain community of Crestline. As NBC4's Tony Shin explains, some believe he may have been targeted by a hitman. Mark was the type of person that um, touched your heart almost immediately when you met him. Harry Crouch is talking about his friend and colleague of 20 years, Mark Angelucci, a 52-year-old man who Harry calls one of the best civil rights attorneys in our country. The two work together at the nonprofit organization, National Coalition for Men, with Harry as president and Mark as vice president, offering legal advice and representation to those who need it. Sometimes just to help them emotionally because they've been falsely accused of something or are contemplating suicide, having a difficult time with a marriage. Saturday afternoon at around 4.30, San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies responded to Mark Angelucci's home in the mountain community of Crestline. That's where they found Mark dead from gunshot wounds. He was assassinated. Harry says one of Mark's roommates witnessed the shooting and told him firsthand what happened after a man showed up, claiming he had a package delivery for Mark. And not knowing that there was an assassin at the door, when he got Mark from his office, he saw the gun turn, tried to run away, and was shot in the back four times. Sheriff's investigators would not confirm any of those details because of the ongoing investigation, but they are asking for witnesses or anyone with information to come forward. Any little bit of information could be what our detectives need in order to identify the suspects involved in the shooting. Harry says he has no idea who would kill Mark or why. But he did tell us that in his private practice, Mark had been working on at least one high-profile corruption case. Maybe we have a psycho out there. I know there are other people. We have other attorneys now who are concerned with their safety. But whoever it is needs to be found and found fast. Tony Shin, NBC4 News. So that particular soundbite right there, that piece, the news, this took place like five days ago. And now... The story is getting very bizarre. Very bizarre, gentlemen. I don't know, have you heard lately where this um this judge son got killed and um the husband got wounded by a nutcase? Similar way that the lawyer got murdered. UPS um delivery service men shot him. So they have some kind of uh, correlation here between him and the, the shooter, but there's nothing concrete yet. There's no, they're not putting evidence yet, right? They're not putting one on one together. So it's still, Mark um, Angelucci is still an unsolved mystery what's happening there, you know? It's, it's very bizarre case and it's very sad to um, to see this, you know? And there's a lot of nuts, a lot of nuts running around and, and just committing crime, you know? So let me play you this other soundbite here. This is just recently today. Because it's the, the, the most upsetting thing for me, right? That the only time you saw this case a few days ago, it was online. Nobody talked about no mainstream media talked about it. No one. Just online. So when the judge out there in New Jersey, her son got murdered. Now all of a sudden, they put in his case back. And they're trying to put one and one or two and two together, right? But meanwhile... Nobody was saying anything. I would have spoke something about this case, but I did not know the case until yesterday when Michael Savage played it on his radio. So now um, I want to play you this, um, this sound bite here in a second here. What actually was going on and why they got they have to do with one another and the cases and stuff like that. We got into this maniac crews out there killing folks and shooting. And this guy, he's a nut fucking case. He sure is. New information about the murder of local attorney Mark Angelucci, a well-known activist in the men's rights movement. Investigators say a man wearing a FedEx uniform shot Angelucci dead in his doorway on July 11. It's a case with disturbing similarities to this deadly shooting at a federal judge's home in New Jersey. Eyewitness News reporter Leanne Souter joining us live now with the late-breaking details. Leanne? Our federal officials now trying to figure out what the cross-country connection may be in both places. The alleged shooter dressed in a FedEx uniform. The mystery unraveling behind the brazen daytime.
nighttime shootings of a federal judge's family in New Jersey, now leading to Southern California and the murder of high-profile attorney Mark Angelucci. The areas of the law that explicitly discriminate against men. The 52-year-old was a well-known men's rights advocate. Attorney Rhonda Kennedy, Angelucci's friend and co-counsel on several cases, says she's in shock. Because of all the similarities, um, you know, which, which it's still, it's, it's scary because now we still don't know what the motive was, where the threat's coming from. Is it connected to anything that we're doing? Angelucci was killed at his home in Crestline July 11th. Federal authorities now investigating the case say he was shot at his front door by a suspect reportedly wearing a FedEx uniform, strikingly similar to the weekend attack on Judge Esther Salas's family. Her 20-year-old son was killed, her husband shot by a suspect dressed in a FedEx uniform with his face covered. The alleged shooter, Manhattan attorney and self-described anti-feminist Roy Den Hollander was found dead today of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. A FedEx package addressed to the judge in his car. Hollander, who had a case before Judge Salas in 2015, was known for suing New York City nightclubs over their ladies' night discounts. I am now trying to turn this tables of equality on the feminazis who have changed this country. Authorities now trying to figure out what his connection may be to Angelucci here in Southern California. He was such a good guy that there is, I can't think of anyone in this entire world that would want to harm him. Kennedy says she's absolutely heartbroken by the loss and says at this point she does not know of any connection between Angelucci and Hollander. But again, authorities trying to figure out what that may be. Well, fellas, there you go. This is the latest news regarding to Angelucci. Um, we see. All we're seeking is justice. I want to start hashtag justice for Angelucci out there on Twitter. And I use willing to put the information out here what's actually going on. I would have put this video and podcast earlier if I would have known the, the whole information about it. Um, the men did great work. Um, I'm trying to do my best as this podcast out here to put all the information down regarding to this um, situation in this case. It's getting really, really weird out there. Honestly, admit, uh, really weird. Well, fellas, this is going to be my podcast for today. Well, you can check me out at midtow.tv. You can check me out at YouTube and all the podcast major station. And with this, I say peace. Stay Midtow. I definitely catch the next podcast or video.